Thanks for coming out today on the day with a lot of good purification energies in the air. Uh -huh. That's what water represents. Uh -huh. And I've been continuing my uh, class clearing teaching on special relationships. All right. And I'd like to continue. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be on the Needless Sacrifice, which is on page 317, chapter 15, if you have the Course in Miracles book. I got some spare ones up here in case you want to follow along. And um, I, I feel a, a kind of like a need to kind of do a little quick review and purpose. The Course in Miracles is basically a course that teaches us how to give new interpretations of everything that we're going through so that we can keep our peace of mind. In other words, how to be in the world without losing your mind. Or, even better, how to be in the world and lose your mind. Mm -hmm. That's when things really pick up for us. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is we haven't lost our mind. And since we haven't lost our minds, we keep ourselves in some form of fear, in some form of pain, some form of conflict. And the Course in Miracles says that in order to have a new reality, you need to have a new way of thinking. And it's out of your new way of thinking that you actually create a new experience for yourself. Most people will agree with that. It's almost you could go anywhere. I could go to the most traditional place and say that. People will go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I could go to the most way out place and say it. And people will go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But in the end, there's a tendency to still expect other people to change in order for us to be happy. Even after hearing that, it's still a ten tendency to think that what we're going through is being caused by something outside of ourselves. And I don't know how to break it to you, but you are an all-powerful, unlimited spiritual being. And that means that everything that's happening in your experience is coming from you. Can't, mm -hmm. say, it's, can't say it's coming from my childhood mm -hmm. because I'm not a child. Mm -hmm. I can't say it's my parents' fault because they're not even in the body anymore. So I can't blame them either. Mm -hmm. So I noticed that in every situation and circumstance that I'm in, I'm the one common denominator. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that, I've noticed that. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> and so sometimes I have a sneaking suspicion that what I may be going through just might have something to do with me. And don't talk, tell it about that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the miracle says, yes, indeedy. That's indeed true. But you're not alone and you have help in changing your mind and therefore changing your experience. And it talks about how one of the main ways to move the quickest is the way that most people want to do the least, which is to listen to wisdom that's greater than their own wisdom. Mm -hmm. Most adults think the answer is me figuring it out through analyzing it, and then me coming up with my own solutions, and then forcing them on all those around me. <laughs> and the Course in Miracles is saying, no. The answer is to have all the blocks in your mind that keeps you from being happy and knowing the truth removed so that the part of you that is divine can do its thing in your experience, and you can watch a transformation happen right in front of your face that you'd never be able to pull off on your own. And it teaches that our relationships either speed us along toward the recognition of the truth that we deserve love and that we are loving, or we use our relationships to delay us or slow us down. And that's our relationship with everything, and not just our relationship with another person. So this section that I've been covering is the section that's the hardest for people to hear 
who have learned to think relationships are going to be done the way the world teaches. So I understand that there will be resistance to hearing what we're talking about. I don't care. <laughs> All right, I want to be happy. I want to let go of my blocks. I want to go to another level, and I'm willing to confront the part of me that doesn't want to hear what I don't want to hear in order to do that. So this section is pretty hardcore that I'm about to cover. Uh, it's called the needless sacrifice. Now, we know that in order to really benefit from the course, we need to recognize that we don't have to believe it, accept it, or welcome it which pe pretty, people pretty much do. Not believe it, not welcome it, and not accept it. So if you, you know, so you're doing pretty good if you're there. <laughs> and then it says you're gonna find it hard to believe and, and, and quite startling. But if you use it, you'll see that it works. So what I'm gonna do is go through the paragraph. I've been, I'm kind of familiar with it. I've been trying to remember it for 35 years. So I think I might know a little bit more about, most, about it than most people that don't do that, study it. So I could save you some time, because I've seen people, including myself, crash and burn, and I've had plenty of times to see people use it and go to where they, where they want to go. So I want to give you the benefit of that, so you don't have to go through it. Is that cool? Because that's the only reason why you should be in a relationship, is to save you time, <laughs> right? Okay, so when the Course talks about the ego, it's talking about the part of us that believes that we're separate. It's talking about the part of us that believes what the world taught us. The part of us that thinks we're separate. Not that we're special. That's the ego, which the course would call the fearful man. And then God, it identifies as the loving part of your mind, the right man. So those of you who have challenges with religious terminology, then just use love or fear. And you'll get everything you need to know out of what I'm talking. So basically, we're being told <clears throat> that there is a part of our mind that is sane and loving, and there's another part of our mind that, quite frankly, is bonkers, <laughs> okay? It's completely nuts and afraid. And so, so a person that's, and I'm gonna do this in plain language so we can get to the juice of it as, as I go through it. So it says, basically, the ego, a person who doesn't really know what love really is, is a person that establishes relationships only to get something. So they own the hunt. And the way that they would keep whatever they are trying to get, they're gonna to try to bind it to them through guilt. So I'm gonna get you, and then I'm gonna keep you through how much guilt you feel. Got that one. Everybody familiar with somebody using guilt to manipulate, okay? Then it says, it's impossible for a fearful, guilty man to even enter into any relationship without anger. Anger. So he says a person that doesn't know what love is, a person that's fear-based, is a person that doesn't even look for a relationship until they're already mad. <laughs> I'm already pissed about how my love life and everything else in my relationships have gone, and now I'm going to get me a loving relationship. I'm already angry. And then it says, because a fearful mind, a person that doesn't know the truth, believes that anger makes friends. In other words, I go off on you and you treat me better. I let you know all the time how upset I am about everything, and that's going to make you love me more. So, don't look at me like you're not familiar with that. Y'all are familiar with that. You know what I'm saying? How many times have you had a friend that you thought you wanted to be closer to and it wasn't going the way you wanted it to, and your way of dealing with, with it was to get angry at them for not, for not treating you the way you think you want to be treated, so you let them know how angry you are so that they'll treat you better. I believe anger makes friends. Now, th this is not going to be my statement. I'm not going to tell you that I think attacking you is going to make you treat me better. Mm -hmm. But it is going to be my fearful, angry, guilty purpose. He says, because the guilty mind, the angry mind, the mind that doesn't know what love is, the ego really believes it can get and keep by making guilty. So fearful people believe that anger and guilt is how they get what they want accomplished. Then it goes on to say, 
this is its one attraction, guilt. An attraction so weak that it would have no hold at all except no one recognizes it. In other words, it looks like I'm being attracted to you through love. And actually, he says, the ego always seems to attract through love and has no attraction at all to anyone who perceives that it attracts through guilt. So I would not be attracted to a person who use anger and guilt to manipulate and create relationships at all. If I understand what love really is, I'm not attracted to somebody who attacks and who doesn't appreciate and who uses guilt to manipulate. I don't care what they look like. I won't want to be in an intimate relationship with them. The spiritual mind goes, I have very discriminating requirements for relationships also. Is the person breathing? <laughs> <laughs> and in some cases, they don't have to be. <laughs> Depends on how many hours after their demise is <laughs> Some people, they just want a body with them. <laughs> and the Course in Miracles says most relationships are just that. They're just two bodies that are hanging out together under the same roof, who never communicate, never talk, never do anything together. He says it works something like this. I don't love myself. I believe love is sacrifice. If I'm going to sacrifice myself, I have to have somebody to sacrifice myself to. So I've got to have somebody here to witness to the sacrifice that I'm making. Mm. Mm. So in other words, if I'm going to suffer, what's the point if there's nobody to see it? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I also need to let you believe you're the reason I'm doing it. That's why when I look at you, I look saddest of all. <laughs> because you're the reason I'm suffering. And then it says, fearful people who don't know what love is, they're only as interested, they're only interested in what the other person is saying based on one premise, which is, here you are with me, we never really communicate, don't have anything really in common, there's no real love being exchanged between us. I'm not really paying any attention to what you're interested in, except I'm listening to see if what you are believing is going to take your body away from me or is what you are studying and reading going to keep you still under my guilty control and right mm -hmm. here? So if you're seeing something that might take you away from me, now I'm curious about this Course in Miracles class and this weird Earl Purdy guy. Mm -hmm. So I might have to come check this out because it looks like the, you're not responding to my guilt with the same expert response that I'm used to. <laughs> you're beginning to think you don't deserve this. Something is wrong. He's a cult leader. <laughs> that, that's a cult. And he's black too? Yeah. <laughs> he's a cult leader. There's no doubt about it. So... If you notice, people who, some people who didn't even give you affection during the relationship will get upset if it looks like someone else is giving you attention. Mm -hmm. Check that out. So they were only interested in what was going on with you if it looked like it's going to take your body away. Now, all of a sudden, they're interested in who you're talking to and where you're going. Not because I want to share with you the love that you deserve. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it because I want you to be there to receive my sacrifice. I got, I got a script that I need acted out for you. So is this too real or can I keep going on? Too it's real. Too real. Okay, this is more than real. Y'all know yeah. it's real. Y'all know it's real. So, um, um, don't take your partner to a Course in Miracles class on Valentine's Day. <laughs> I totally disillusioned them. <laughs> You know, send them a card. Thank you for the most unreal love I've ever <laughs> had. <laughs> and it's funny, it's, it gets to the point that even if it looks like something isn't going the way you think you'd like it to go in the relationship, when you begin to wake up, you immediately ask yourself, what is it within me that I need to take a look at that's producing this pattern that I'm seeing? Even then, you don't go, it's your fault. Even though you might say, this is how I'm experiencing something that I'm seeing in you right now. So it's not like you wouldn't have honest communication with another person if you were in a relationship. 
It's just that if you're a conscious being, at no point during the conversation do you really believe the way that you're feeling is being caused by their behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can certainly give them an option in terms of how they might like to respond to you. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So so it's a difference between trying to straighten out a disagreement between us because we're both taking responsibility from our experience and want to get past any blocks that keep us from joining. Mm -hmm. And one of us wanting to be right in our projection on the other person mm -hmm. that is their fault and what they need to do to change and make it better. And when they tell me what they're going to do differently to make me happy, now the situation has been resolved as two different kind of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? So it says, um, uh, I love it. Now he also, he also says the, the fearful mind always seems to attract through love. So, so it's not, people who are afraid and don't really know how to connect, they still think they're attracted to love too. That's why they end up getting so disappointed in the end because it wasn't. They thought it was. Okay, so could we possibly be doing relationships correctly when we go through so many changes in them so often? That's a good question. Doesn't it make sense that if we were doing something right, we would get the result, which is happiness, that's consistent? So how could we be doing relationships? I, I often think about, like you take marriage, everybody says, let's get married, let's get married, get married, get married, get married, get married, get married. And I was thinking about how many products would you buy if you saw the result of that product being as little happy marriages as you see. <laughs> I mean, just be straight up about it. Like, like, like all of us in the room, how many people, couples, can you actually say you honestly admire their marriage and their intimate relationship and they seem to be completely loving and understanding with each other and conscious and excited and, and and really feel good about it, Great and thing. totally kind and loving, acknowledging, and they've been together up past the honeymoon period. Mm -hmm. and I, come to, I don't count the honeymoon period. Mm -hmm. The honeymoon period is just the period when you are most convinced that your fantasy has a possibility of being acted out. <laughs> and that's why it's a honeymoon. <laughs> because it looks like this might be the one. This might be the, I might be able to truly get my specialist that I need to feel okay out of this one. Okay, so how many of y'all know five? It sounds so hopeless. Ten. I wanted, to, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to sound hopeless enough for us to do something different. Because as long as you think it's some hope in doing something that will never work, what you'll tell yourself is you just haven't found the right person to do the thing that will never work with. Rather than going, this approach to relationship doesn't work. We think, I just haven't found the right person to run my game on yet <laughs> that really will act it out. I'm, 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 I admit, I'm just being straight up now. Some people is going to make them feel really awake, and they'll be glad to hear it because they want to do it differently. Some of us are going to go to sleep. The court says, that's just the way it is. If you're not ready to break a pattern, you go unconscious. If you're ready to break a pattern, you, pattern, you go, wow, I heard that today in a way I've never heard it before. As a teacher, it's not my responsibility to, to affect how a person responds. It's my responsibility to get a message that I need to learn. Y'all follow me? Okay, so I didn't write the book, so I don't have to defend it. I didn't write the course, so I don't have to defend what it's saying. But the truth is, all of us know deep down in our souls, we all know the truth. It's written in our hearts. All of us know. We're all at just different degrees of how much crap we've had that we don't want to do anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's in direct proportion to how much you think you need to suffer. Mm -hmm. So I'll never be helpful to a person who's determined to suffer because that's the way they're going to make themselves better is through punishing themselves. But I'll be very help helpful to a person who goes, I see that routine in myself and I want it to be different. Mm -hmm. I know I got these routines. Raj, I know I manipulate, I know I get angry, I know I use guilt, I know I have some insecurities, broken into by periods in which I act like I'm real confident about what's going on and we have a good time. I want to break that pattern. I'm not sitting up here saying I don't have relationship issues. I do have relationship issues because, because I learned the same thing that everybody else learned. I didn't come from an alien planet. I, you know, I pretty much hung up here, out here, so I got the same erroneous ideas that everybody else has. But I want to go beyond them. That's the difference. 
right? Mm -hmm. And so I want to be happy more than I want to be right. Mm -hmm. So it goes on to say, first of all, let's get past the block. So it says, so the first thing you have to do is to understand you have a sick attraction to guilt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that you have made your attraction to guilt real. So you got to look at your attraction to guilt clearly and then by withdrawing your investment in guilt, you learn to let it go. So how do I learn to let go of guilt and anger? He says, well, you withdraw your investment in guilt and anger. Well, how do I withdraw my investment in guilt and anger? By looking at the guilt and anger clearly and not pretending that it's not there. And how, why will I look at it clearly? He says, because I've made it real to me. And since I've made it real to me, I need to look at it. For some reason, I'm attracted to drama. For some reason, I'm attracted to guilt. For some reason, I'm attracted to uh, not really being appreciated and loved. I need to take a look at that. Mm -hmm. And then it says, no one would choose to let go of something that they believe is valuable. So a person will not let go of guilt as long as they think it's valuable. We've been taught that guilt is valuable. We've actually been taught that how guilty you feel determines how nice you are. You're a much more loving person if you think you've hurt someone and you feel guilty about it. And the Course in Miracles says, no, if you feel guilty about it, you're just going to do it again. Mm -hmm. If you see it as a mistake, you won't want to repeat it. Mm -hmm. So if I say trying to make you guilty and attacking you and abusing you is a mistake, my mind goes, eep, mistake. I don't, you know how I feel about mistakes, party. That's where my mind goes, I don't never want to make a mistake. I, I want to be right. I count on being right. I, I get up in the morning with the goal of being right, even when I'm wrong. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? The Course of Miracles says, you guys get up in the, with, in the morning with, I want to be right today, all day, even if I'm wrong as hell, I want to think I'm right. He says, that's our goal. To the point that somebody could tell us something that was helpful, and we wouldn't even want to hear it. Because it's not what I thought of, and I want to be right. Mm -hmm. So so the Course is saying to us that as long as you think you feeling guilty or making someone else feel guilty has value, you're going to continue to do it. And that you won't stop doing something you feel guilty about. You'll stop doing something that you believe doesn't get you what you want mm -hmm. and that you don't believe works. Because if you think it doesn't work, you know, a flashlight that doesn't work you don't keep trying to use it after a certain period of time. You just put that flashlight down and go try to find another. Why? Because it doesn't work. You don't go to the flashlight guilty because it didn't come on. So let me take the flashlight to therapy. Let's see if we can get this flashlight to spin now. You go to the flashlight didn't work. I'm going to put the flashlight down, find one that works. Because that's what the Course is saying. You won't stop making yourself feel guilty and bad as long as you think there's any justification for it. And as long as you think it serves some useful purpose, you keep, I'll beat myself up about the things that I do because I think good people do. So what does that mean? Well, it means the person who thinks they're an extra good person, extra nice person, then this is gonna be the person that feels guilty about every freaking thing they do. Because they think a good person feels guilty, so they're guilty about everything. Have you met people like that? Yeah. Every little singing freaking thing. They feel, and they think that, that they're feeling guilty because they're nice. And really they're feeling guilty because they are trying to keep their own suffering going. Mm -hmm. And they think it's about letting it go. According to the course that we don't have to believe, don't have to sell. <laughs> so the court says, yet you all are attracted to guilt. The attraction of guilt has value to you only because you haven't really looked at what your attraction to guilt is and you judge your attraction to guilt completely in the dark. That's true. The reason why we still think it's valuable, isn't that true? That it's because we haven't really looked at it. I mean, think about it. When was the last time someone run, had a conversation with you like I'm having with you right now? We really don't look at it. And so the Course says, so as you bring your attraction to guilt to the light, where you can see it, he says, your only question will be, well, why was it I ever wanted to feel guilty? Well, why would I want to feel guilty? That's what people usually ask in the class. Well, well what, what do you mean? I, well, why do I want to feel guilty? Well, I'll tell you why you want to feel guilty. Because you think guilty, feeling guilty absolves you of whatever it is you've done. Oh. If I, if, I, if I feel guilty, then I'm, the slate's clean. If I punish myself, the slate's clean. I feel bad. You know, I'm mistreating you, but I feel bad about it, so I'll cuss you out tomorrow, too. And I'll feel bad about it, and I'll cuss you out the next day, and I'll feel... Because I didn't just cuss you out and didn't feel bad. I cussed you out 
and I feel bad. <laughs> so I'm a good person. <laughs> the, the cruel person is the one who cusses you out and doesn't feel bad. <laughs> I'm spiritual, so I'll make you feel guilty and then feel bad about it. Isn't that great? <laughs> And I, you, I remember being married, and I was in my early 20s, and I was a tyrant. <laughs> I didn't think I was. No tyrant thinks they are. All tyrants believe they're benefiting everybody around them with their tyranny. <laughs> Hitler probably had a heart around his picture. <laughs> I mean, his name told you everything, Hitler. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm a hit man. I'm taking you out. At your request, by the way. At some level. And so that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. I ain't going <laughs> Now, because we love being victims. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the best way in the world not to have to make any change in yourself and then hold everybody else responsible for you. Have I understand? It looks like that's a good plan. If I just wait for everybody around me to shift so I can be happy. Mm -hmm. This sounds so reasonable, but because the problem is you anyway. It's not me. I'm nice. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't hurt anybody unless they mess with me first. Mm -hmm. I only attack in self-defense. You know how people treat defenseless innocents in this world. They just run over you if you're real nice. So I only attack when I'm threatened. I'm a nice person. <laughs> I just blow you away under the certain circumstances. <laughs> you know, like, you know, true students, I got my mace and my affirmation and my 45. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I love it. Ah, so I'm going to keep going a little bit further because I think I got enough savings for next month. <laughs> 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 oh God, I tell you, I'm not going to go into the detail about it, but this past week has been a week that um, taught me that God was real in a way that I've never experienced it before, and so I'm a little bit shaken up right now. You have those times that your whole paradigm of life gets shaken, and you go, oh my God, it's true. I mean, it's really true. It's, what I'm teaching is really true. <laughs> and he says that in the book. He says, he says in the end, you're going to say, the truth is true. <laughs> when you get through with everything, you're going to go, this really is true. You know, because you're kind of playing with it, you're saying it, you know. Think you believe it? You know, you can pop an affirmation out faster than the person can look at Pete. You know, what I'm <laughs> you can, you can just, you know, you know, you know, we're good. We can pop them out boy, until somebody take our parking space and then we want to kill them. Then, then you kind of get maybe you're not on the level of consciousness you thought you were. On. <laughs> right? You think you're the spiritual giant, and then I say Christ. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I can say Hare Krishna, power, no problem. I can say Buddha. I can say Yogananda. I can say Yoga Bear. I can say anything. But if I said Jesus, <laughs> you know, that was but we're spiritual giants of open mindedness. As long as you don't say anything I don't agree with. <laughs> it was so hilarious. Course says that when we're seeing things correctly, instead of getting upset about all the insanity that we see around us, we will be laughing our butts off all day at the absolute absurdity of the way we are. It'll be the funniest thing in the world, the way we are. Instead of getting like appalled by the newspaper, you'll be like, ah! <laughs> I think a son of God could be taken out this way. <laughs> you know, thinking that we're alone like this. You know, it's like you, it become absurd to you when you realize your connection to source, the stuff that we're going through. And it's even more absurd that you're the one that's doing it. To yourself, and, that, and you and you'll laugh at it. You won't beat yourself up about it. You'll laugh at it. You know why? Because you will be liberated. You will be free. The once you realize, oh, I got the key to the jail cell, and I, you know, I, you've done it a million times. Look for your car key, and it was in your pocket. Mm -hmm. So no matter where you looked on the outside, would you have ever found the car key? And that's us now. The key is inside of us, and we're hunting around for everybody to everybody else to give it to us. 
And the special relationship is supposed to be the special key holder. <laughs> You're the one who has the key better than anybody. You know what I'm saying? Could I have me a little hot key tonight? You know what I'm saying? Using to the key, right? So the course says, as we bring your attraction to guilt to the light, your only question will be, why was it I ever wanted guilt? You have, well, he says, well, you have nothing, class. You have nothing to lose by looking with your eyes open. That, that in itself is an accomplishment with the course. At such ugliness as this, because guilt doesn't belong in your holy, innocent mind. You don't deserve to feel crappy about yourself. And you are a host of God, so that means you are a host of love, so you can no longer have an investment in guilt. Mm -hmm. So the once you want to host love, you have, and I've even heard people say they don't feel guilty. I haven't even heard that. I've heard people tell me, I don't feel guilty about anything. They got drama, catastrophe, disease, broke, don't have relationships to work, and they'll look at you straight in the face and say, I don't have any guilt about anything. Why do you think all this stuff is happening to you? It's to make you aware that you do have some thoughts that you need to get in touch with that's kicking your butt, but you think you're a nice person that's a victim of it. You need to take a look at what's going on. You got some unconscious stuff going on that you need to look at. So, so, so the first step to having relationships that work is for you to make a hardcore decision that you're not going to be in relationships with people that try to make you feel guilty all the time. And if that's too deep for anybody to understand, this class is too deep. <laughs> Can we be excited about that? <laughs> that would be so thrilling to me if I was saying, <laughs> if I was saying anything that's really exciting to people. <laughs> if I'm in a relationship with you, Earl. Uh, that's right, Lord have mercy. It's a right kind of relationship. I know how often we talk to each other about once every six months. It's made us be I have our relationship for years now. <laughs> We have a true love. We know we have an argument. <laughs> yeah, we just take up where we left off. That's right, that's right. We found the secret to our longevity. <laughs> Do absolutely nothing together. <laughs> says I can't be successful in relationships. <laughs> I got people I've had no connection with for 30 years now. We're, we're doing great. <laughs> so you ought to just say to a person right at the very beginning when you meet them, now let's just be straight up. Now we're about to trigger each other's patterns. It's going to be the perfect, it's got to be the perfect joining of patterns for us to be attracted. That's why we were attracted. Whatever my pattern is, I guarantee you, you're going to trigger it. Well, why? Why do you say that? It's my girl. Why do you say that? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm attracted to you. <laughs> That's why I say it. And you're attracted to me. That's all we need to know. We're attracted to each other. We're going to trigger each other's pattern. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be attracted to each other if we weren't. So let's enjoy each other before the dance really begins. <laughs> <laughs> Try to see how many movies we can get in, how much good luck we can how many we can pull off while we really think we're new to each other. Because <laughs> now we're pretending we're new. This is new. This, you're different from everybody else. And you are. You really are. But I'll have a tendency to bring the past into the present. Yeah. Because we've been taught to use the past to determine the present. So it's very reasonable that you'll use your past experience but it's totally delusional. You know why? Because this person isn't your past experience. I'm not the guy before me. So if you use me, use him to judge how to deal with me, you're not being fair to me. But you call it wisdom. I'm using my experience. Now in that case, yeah, you're using your pattern. And it will activate again if you decide to use it. They'll turn into your pattern, even if they weren't, because you'll edit out everything that doesn't fit it. All the things they do that's not your pattern, you won't even notice it, and you'll only notice what they do that's, that's what my old girlfriend Jambalaya did. It's <laughs> <laughs> a black thing. <laughs> Double <laughs> 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 line, Laquita Jones. <laughs> 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 I 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, would used to be the person that had the greatest amount of passion. Mm. Y'all ever noticed that? Yeah. The same person that drives you crazy, you want to just rip their clothes off every time you see them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then the person that's all nicey, nicey, right. you know, they couldn't get you turned on if they life depended on <laughs> I want a man that respect me. Man, we won't never have sex, but he'll respect me. <laughs> 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 you know, I need John the Hellion Hellboy motorcycle driver. That's the one I'm turning on. I want him to come over tonight. The one, the one who tried to choke me with my coolest book. That's the one I'm going to He's so hot. I know he beat me with my coolest book, but you see his butt? Girl? You got that bounce a quarter off of that. Get me crazy. I'll get him a clarity session with Earl. <laughs> we'll get past that problem. I gotta have the boy. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. <laughs> <laughs> See, the Lord says we got in the position that we feel fear and conflict and upset because we remembered not to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> it says we don't laugh enough, and so we take things seriously. And since we are creators, when we take things seriously, we manifest in our perception. So that's why I try to do this with humor, because it's easier, you know, a little bit of mixed up. Go down, right? Sure. Just a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. I, I never saw Mary Poppins until this last Christmas. Never what? looked at it. Oh, oh, oh. Well, so really? I remember, yeah, I heard, yeah, the chick with the flying umbrella wasn't doing it for me. But, <laughs> yeah. but now that I'm kind of, kind of into Mary Poppins, I kind of feel a little weird. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so, Julia. as I go deeper into this, before I go deeper into this, um, any questions about what I said or, or comments or your own personal realizations from your own incredible relationships that you've had? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I realize I try to guilt trip my wife. Mm -hmm. I realize it right today. I just realize it. Mm. And you know something? Sometimes what perpetuates guilt tripping people is if they really want to be special with you enough, they appear to let you. Right, so you guilt trip and it trip trip them. They seem to respond to your guilt trip, which further convinces you that that's the way you should deal with them. And so they don't realize they're perpetuating their own abuse by giving in to you. You know, so like when I was a tyrant and I was teaching the truth because that's why I was a tyrant because I needed to teach the truth so I could learn it. Um. And then my partner was also studying and listening, too. And through listening to me teach, she became strong enough to not do whatever it was I was trying to get her to do tyrannically. It was the worst thing ever happened to me. I will never bring a partner to a course class again. So those of you who use guilt to manipulate, do not bring your mates to my class. You lose your all your power. <laughs> and actually, and she said that thanks to you. <laughs> thanks to you. So I used to have a running joke with myself. I, I'm the guy that helps women to define what they really want. <laughs> I wasn't sure about what I wanted until I met you. No? <laughs> sure, thank you, Raj. <laughs> thank you very much. I was kind of on the fence. Now I know exactly what I want. Okay, so, I a, I a, so, um, so I'm just going to say this out loud. But, mm -hmm. um, so I look at you here about relationships. So I see that what I do... I have been in a significant relationship for a number of years because I believe what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And so I always make sure if I'm in a relationship, I've always got a way to get out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. so yeah. Um, no real attachments. But at the same time, I know there's something more, but I'm not sure 
Um, and that's what we're talking about. That's the point. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm going slow with this. It's because, well, there's no need to rush. You know what I'm saying? It's like we need to understand because the ones we can see, then we can be okay. It's, it's when you don't know what you're doing to yourself that you can't stop it. But when you become aware, then that's when you can end it. The biggest challenge is, is when people say, this doesn't apply to me. Like I have people come to me and say, well, Earl, I appreciate what you're saying about relationships, but I'm not in a relationship, so I don't really see how that applies. I'm like, you have a relationship with every single thing in your life. You got a relationship with your money, your car, your house, your job, your relatives. Don't come up to me and tell me you don't have no relationship. You think I'm talking about a love affair. I'm not talking about a love affair. I'm talking about anything, because you can make yourself feel guilty about money. In your relationship with money, you can make yourself feel guilty. You can just you can berate yourself the way you can berate other people. But when, but what I'm saying is that when I was a tyrant, I didn't know it. I didn't like to get up in the morning and say I'm going to be tyrannical. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, and when I'm going to be the most loving person I can be. And if you just had right, then I'd be really happy. <laughs> Because you're the only one that's not on board. <laughs> Everybody else see me as the magnificent being that I am. Why don't you? I live with you. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> You know, you know something wrong when you're teaching your heart out and you hear your partner going, hmm. <laughs> 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 Maybe that's not good PR or something. <laughs> <laughs> go to the go, Come back and pick me up and talk. I'll have my stand made white. <laughs> Oh, what's a miracle like? I ever sitting there. Hi. Oh, he's, that's what he says, class. He is exactly what. With my check in the back. He is exactly like that. You know, Earl. Yeah. If yeah. we play these kinds of games with each other, mm -hmm. how about with our source? Or oh, with our well, the, well, the, I mean, well, that, well, he's going to get to that. Those are oh. pretty bad, too. Yeah. Well, that's what's so funny that, that he gets into it further late, later on. He says, well, all these attempts at guilt is really an attempt to make God feel guilty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because, because look what God did to us. God created us and dropped us off into a world where you could be walking down the street and, and the car bomb hit you. Or there's, there's the West Nile. And then, of course... Can't be no regular bee. It had to be what? An Afro from Africa. <laughs> I mean, I can't get a break. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> first you, it's the dark side, oh, and then it's the shadow. You know, and then it's the Africanized bee. You know, like, I create such an interesting dream around things up to the darkness. <laughs> so what happens when God feels guilty? No, no. That, that you absolutely know it's not God. <laughs> That's your absolute certainty that God does feel not feel guilty. Love feels no guilt. Love feels no guilt. Mm -hmm. See, you can't really say you love me and feel guilty about how you experience me. So if you say you love me, but you feel guilty about what you do with me, I know you don't love me. So I have to act from that information. Not that you don't think you love me. But my truth teaches me there is no guilt in love. So if I'm feeling guilty about a relationship, whatever it might be, it's not love. Mm -hmm. It's really guilt and a way to perpetuate it. So if I'm in a relationship and I feel guilty about it, but I say I'm in love with this person, I'm not. I'm in love with the guilt that I'm getting from the relationship, which is a form of punishment on myself because I don't feel worthy of love. So I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to seek it with somebody I can have it, or that is really being offered. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Take a breath. Oh, this is such a light class on a nice, warm, sunny day. <laughs> you know, how many of you all in your gut know that what the course is saying is the truth? Mm -hmm. Even though we don't necessarily like it, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be the key to us. Don't get me wrong. We're only <clears throat> listening to this so that we can let go of these blocks, so that we can have the kind of love we deserve. We're not listening to this just to be listening to this. This is one of the stages to having the kind of relationships you've always wanted in your heart. Mm 
That's why we're doing it. So we got, we got to stay focused on the goal or we'll lose consciousness. Because if I can go through it in my mind, I don't have to go through it in my body. See, and I'm trying to stop having to learn every lesson through my body. Mm -hmm. I'd rather learn it through my mind. Right. Okay, so I'm watching y'all. And I'm learning from your experiences. Mm -hmm. I'm watching you very close. Some people are experts at teaching you what never to do if you want to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> and, they're the best, they're, and so many of those teachers are to blow your mind. <laughs> the ones who like trying to tell you what to do with your money, and they can't afford to go to a movie trying to tell you how to deal with your love life and you've never seen them in a date in years. You know, you know what I'm saying? Those people who are always good at telling everybody else how to live, but they don't exemplify any of those things in their own expression of themselves. Those are the ones who are teaching you what not to do. Okay? So, um, any, other, any other question before I I started about 10 after, so I'm going to go to about 10 after, so we have a whole hour. Mm -hmm. I was just going to comment on, you know, about relationships. You know, all my life I've it's always been my whole goal to seek out relationships. And when I started studying the course, now that I'm really studying, it hasn't been my goal. My goal is to seek God. And when I'm doing that, I'm noticing that I'm having experiences like what you're talking about, these, oh yeah, God is just 10 times more real than I thought even five minutes ago. Because mm -hmm. I've been asking for, can I, I want a, a mind-blowing experience even better than yesterday. That's mm -hmm. right. And before, I was kind of afraid when you said that maybe a year ago, but I've been doing that lately, uh, you know, Holy Spirit, I want even a better experience, even a, just blow my mind. And I've been having these experiences, it's just been unbelievable. And they haven't been in the search of a relationship. Like yesterday I went to the mountains and I just had this time, it was just like heaven all day until midnight. And it was by myself, yeah. uh, but I, it was just one thing after another. Okay. And I, I realized, you know, in the past it was, because all day long if I were to go to the mountains that day and I wasn't, you know, connected to spirit, I would be thinking about some type of a relationship, either, either with a thing or a person, that whole time I was enjoying myself, so I wasn't able to enjoy my day. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. what I did yesterday, yeah. different yeah. to where I had like heaven on earth all day. Mm. It was one, of the, one of the most radical statements of the Course of Miracles is, is that uh, Jesus says, um, you have no need of special relationships at all. Mm. Now, does that mean that you shouldn't have one, or it could, should be snakes. Said, no, no. Uh, just let me take away as much fear as possible from it. Perfectly okay for you to have one, but don't, you don't need it. Right. See, we're coming from the place, I, I need it. <laughs> I, I gotta have somebody. And the Course of Miracles says, no, you just gotta have God. And realize you need everybody. He said, you don't need one body, you need everybody. You know, and that's the mistake we make. I, I just need one. No, he said, no, I need all of you. I need all of you, but the nature of the special relationship that as we do it is exclude everybody else but you. And then I make you everything, which is gonna be a lot of pressure on you. <laughs> whole lot of pressure on you, right? So the truth is I'm whole and complete. I don't need anyone in order to feel whole and complete. So I'll probably draw other people who wanna be whole and complete or who are whole and complete. Mm -hmm. Hmm, what is gonna happen with them? Everything and anything, in fun and in joy and in safety, because they value their freedom and taking mm -hmm. responsibility and their joy and their self-expression as much as you value yours, so they're not making any more unreasonable demands on you. you know, like, like when I have to change my mind or an, an engagement doesn't happen or I can't do something, my friends tend to bent over backwards to let me know that I'm innocent mm -hmm. about not being able to show up to a party or you're still innocent. I want you to be where it makes you happy. I remember uh, living in a world where I would get a different response. See there? You <laughs> yeah, you know, you know never show. You didn't show up to that party. You know what I'm saying? Y'all you know, know what I'm talking about? You know exactly. You grew up here. You know. And then, and then when you have friends that are going, well, I just want you to feel innocent about where you are and what you're doing. It's not hard to choose which one of the worlds and relationships you want to have. That's not a that's not a rough choice at all. It's who's gonna. It's who is reinforcing my innocence, which is where my safety and happiness lies. And who is it that's constantly supporting me and feeling guilty? and angry and upset. So, so it says um, that we've said before 
that the part of you that's the ego attempts to maintain and increase your guilt, but do it in a way that you don't recognize what it's doing to you. And so the fearful mind's fundamental doctrine is that what you do to other people is not going to happen to you. So I can go off on you and attack you, but it's not going to happen to me. And then he says, the part of you that's the ego that doesn't love you, it doesn't wish anyone well. So the part of you that's the ego that's afraid and guilty, he says, it wishes, its survival depends on your belief that you are exempt from its evil intentions. So the part of me that attacks, its survival depends on me thinking that all that attack is not going to come back on me. And it's not going to have any effect. See, why would I keep doing something if I knew I was going to be the one that was going to have to reap the results of it? So, so there has to be a part of my mind that's convincing me that when I attack others, when I try to manipulate others, it's somehow or another not going to have any kind of a negative effect on me. That's why you keep doing it, right? And then he says, so your ego counsels, therefore, that if you're a host to this anger, then your anger or ego will enable you to direct its anger outward, right? Thus protecting you. That's what we do. I'm going to protect myself by going off on you. I'm going to protect myself by attacking you first. He says, so a mind that feels that way, that's angry and afraid of love, that thinks that guilt and manipulation is the way to get a relationship, it says, that person embarks on an endless, unrewarding chain of special relationships. These relationships are like a, like, like, like a blacksmith, forged out of anger. Clank, mm -hmm. clank, got it? Yeah. Uh, dedicated to one insane belief, that an average special relationship is dedicated to one insane belief. The more anger I invest outside of myself, the more I'm mad at everybody else, the more I blame somebody else, the safer I become. So my safety, is based on me projecting all of my anger and disgust and criticism and judgment on you all because if I'm suspicious of you, if I attack you, if I judge you, and if, I'm, if I am um, making you feel guilty, it's going to make me feel safer. He says, so we form relationships to basically project our own stuff that we need to deal with in ourselves outwardly on somebody else to make us believe we are good mm. and not the problem. And we're saying, I see that trick. I see somebody approaching me with that trick or even me getting ready to approach somebody with that trick. Now I can be conscious enough to say, I want another way to look at this. <laughs> I don't want to fall for this pattern ever again. And I'm going to stop my pattern by starting today. I'm going to do everything in my power to take 100% responsibility for the way that I'm feeling in this relationship. And I'm going to take every possibility I can to support my friends and my partners and my relatives recognizing that they are innocent mm -hmm. and that they are sinless and guiltless. And they make mistakes and <clears throat> I make mistakes and we can go beyond those mistakes together. But not from the perspective that you're bad and I'm bad. So could you acknowledge yourself and hear this message of the Holy Spirit? That was deep. That was deep. So uh, let's do the financial expression of appreciation. I really appreciate you sharing with me. I'm a full-time teacher with the Course in Miracles, and God sustains me through the people who see value in what I do. So thank you so much. Thank you. Those of you who are online watching this class, you can make a financial expression of appreciation by going to earlperdy.com. And I'm available for one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions, where I take the teachers of the course and my knowledge of astrology and numerology for those who are open-minded to that. And we bring it to whatever your issue is, the thing that you're ready to change, that you, wanna, you now have reached your limit and you're ready to have the happiness that you deserve then we can get together and do that. Those online, you can go to my website to find out more about it. And we can do it on Skype, over the phone. I counsel with people literally all over the world. So um, you're not alone. There's a way past your block. You don't have to keep it going another three months. If you want to change, help is available right now. Pretend one of those sessions with me 
is you buying a ticket to a Bronco game so you can feel okay about it. <laughs> <laughs> because it's possible that the way that you can get past all your blocks are right in front of your face, but you can't see it. So you might need somebody else to see it for you so you can see it for yourself so that you can get past it. That's exactly what I need. So it's all good. So, so I want to, I'm doing this differently today. I like to ask you to just close your eyes for a minute. You don't, I don't want you to analyze anything, and I'm just going to do a real quick review. And you know, whatever you hear is okay. Because you already have healed just by making the agreement to join. So Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, we're doing the Way of Mastery, which teaches three ways to happiness. The way of the heart, the way of transformation, and the way of knowing. So if you want a deep metaphysical spiritual class also, it'll blow your mind. So let's listen to it. Remember when somebody approaches you, that if they don't know that they're spirit and they don't know that they're innocent, they're coming to get something. And since they believe the way the world teaches, they're going to try to keep you bound to them through guilt and anger. Because they don't know how to enter a relationship without anger because they learn that getting upset and letting people know how mad you are, that makes friends. A person that doesn't know what love is, and when you're not in your loving mind, your ego would try to convince you that you can keep somebody by making them feel guilty. And if you recognize that this person, be it a friend, a relative, a boss, a co-worker, a lover, that they're trying to use guilt to manipulate you, then you won't be attracted to them at all. Because it's going to look like you're attracted to somebody through love when you're full of fear. But the truth is you're feeling a lack in yourself. And you think you're going to get this person to take care of that lack. And that part that feels lack is going to try to snatch that other person to get their value. And they're gonna feel guilty because here I am snatching you because I see you as being really valuable, but I'm giving you me. Mm, I feel guilty about that. <laughs> Cause I don't value me and I'm giving you something that I don't really even value. So I feel kind of really, I feel like this is an unfair trade. So you've got to recognize that there's a part of your mind that's attracted and has been programmed for guilt. And you have to stop investing in guilt, investing in the people that use guilt and use anger. Do like my teacher did, said, hey, you know what? Tyranny won't work. I was also creating it, but I no longer will accept that kind of approach and behavior. So if you want to communicate with me, you're going to have to do it some other way other than guilt and anger. And I'm not going to respond to anything less. So the more you get upset and the more you attack, the less I'm going to respond. I'm not going to respond more because that will convince you that attacking me works. And I'm going to convince you that attacking me doesn't work by refusing to respond to your attack. So you now have brought your guilt to the light. That's why you're questioning it. And you don't have anything to lose by looking at this and coming to a class like this and being free of everything that limits you. Because guilt doesn't belong in your holy mind. Guilt doesn't belong in your holy mind. I say guilt doesn't belong in your innocent mind. Guilt doesn't belong in my 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 innocent mind. Now I have just one more thing to say, and it's this. Stop putting guilt trips upon yourself, because sometimes you make your own self 
feel more guilty than anyone. You have to stop judging and condemning yourself because that's you trying to have a relationship with you through guilt. So stop manipulating yourself through guilt. Let me give you an example of that. When you have a goal you're trying to you're trying to achieve and you're trying to make yourself get up in the morning and do it by disparaging yourself or putting yourself down because you haven't done what you said you were gonna do. That's you trying to use guilt to manipulate yourself. Don't try to go toward what you want by putting yourself down first. Don't try to make yourself do something by putting yourself down first. Don't use judgment and criticism of yourself to motivate you. Don't use judge and criticisms of yourself to motivate you. So don't do that guilt trip on yourself. Stop putting guilt trips on yourself. If you didn't visit your mama, if you didn't get to work on time, if you didn't do something you said you were going to do, tell yourself that was a mistake. I did say I was going to do it. But it doesn't mean you're guilty. It doesn't mean you're bad. It doesn't mean you've lost your innocence and been had. It doesn't mean you don't deserve love because you're going to get the love from above. You are valuable. And there's nothing you can do to lose that value. Your value is established by God. It's you that's being so hard on yourself. It's time to stop and love yourself. I love myself. I love yourself. I love myself. I love myself. I free myself. I love myself. I free myself. I free you. I free you. I'm going to let my parents off the hook. I'm going to let my friends off the hook. I'm going to let my coworkers off the hook. I'm going to let my boss off the hook. I'm going to let the government off the hook. I'm going to let the president off the hook. I'm going to let God off the hook. I'm going to let myself off the hook. This is the day that I release myself to find the way you are innocent, innocent, innocent. Beautiful, luscious, luscious, juicy, alive. Mmm, ah, ooh, oh, mmm. <laughs> I love you. Thanks for coming, Holy Spirit. You're all so cool. You're so pretty cool. That's right. And I see you, you. <laughs> Hugs are available. <laughs>